All right, man, top 10 grown man sneakers of 2023. Holy smokes, insane. I have a lot more on the way. Obviously, I'm gonna do my top 10 sneakers of the year and a few other categories that you don't see a lot of other people do. But in this one, I am talking about grown man sneakers, products that are going to age well, that are a little less gimmicky, that you can dress up. That's it. If you have any suggestions yourself, leave them down in the comment section. Let's get into it. First up, New Balance and Ame Leondor had some pretty nice collaborations this year. This one, I think, is probably the cleanest out of everything they put out there. A model that we have not seen them work on before. This is the T500. As you can see, aesthetically, it doesn't get more simple than this. The lines are clean and that N is just pronounced. This is a sleeper for sure. These came and went, but I didn't forget. Okay, and at number nine, we have the Air Jordan 1 replacement shoe, the Airship PE Tech Gray. I really feel like the Jordan 1 ran its course this year, and this is an excellent alternative that I found a little bit more comfortable. I love it when the swoosh is in suede sitting on top of leather. This is probably the most wearable shoe on the list, especially for right now. Some nice chinos, a good sweater, money. Okay, at number eight is a shoe that I'm talking about for 15 seconds. The Nike Air Force One color of the month, forest green on the swoosh, gum bottom, premium leather, just the color of the month series delivered for me. It's a premium Air Force One that fits my foot well. They're simple, they're timeless, they're classic. It is literally the definition of a grown man sneaker. I bought many color of the month pairs. Now, along those same lines, we've got something from Nike SB. There's a lot of people that would think Nike SBs don't have a grown man vibe. They're streetwear and skateboarding only, and I would tend to agree with you. But as someone that grew up skateboarding, still skateboards, it's kind of in my roots to have a nice clean pair. As far as wearability goes, I don't think that there was one better than this shoe right here. These are the dunks that, you know, Someone looks at them and they ask you if you bought them at finish line and you just look at them like, nah. There were some absolutely crazy Nike SB Dunk collaborations this year. Some were great, some were, I was looking at like, wow, those are, those are out there, those are not for me. So something simple like this, this is probably the most simple SB that dropped in my opinion and that makes them easy to style. Okay, at number six, we have probably the best Jordan 3 ever. The reimagined pair is perfect. I literally have no gripes with this sneaker. I am so happy to have these. I actually doubled up on them. They're absolutely perfect. If you're into classic Jordans, it doesn't get much better than this. Number five is a pair of Adidas that I just got. They've grown on me and I just absolutely love these. Absolutely love them. We've got the Adidas Gazelle Indoor. When I first saw these, they definitely caught my eye, but the price tag did not. The price tag was 150, I believe, and now they're 120. I think that that is more in line with what you get. Obviously, the Samba is one of the most popular sneakers in the world right now. The Gazelle is, is quite popular as well, but this is definitely the best version I've seen out of any of the low profile soccer sneakers, I see some very stylish people rocking shoes that look just like this. A lot of them are overseas in Europe and I'm always, you know, I dig their style. Like Harry Haas has great style and I feel like this is something I could totally see him wearing and I don't ignore that type of thing. I always try to get a little inspiration from what's hot over there. I spent a lot of time on the Gazelle Indoor. I was not expecting to, but it's a good one. Okay, at number four, we have a pair of fours. The Air Jordan 4 Olive Craft. Man, I get it. I get why a lot of people didn't buy these. They are expensive. That 210 price tag and Jordans have been dropping like crazy recently. It's hard to make buying decisions. You gotta skip some. You can't get everything. I went out on a limb and grabbed these. And if you've seen them in person, you'll know that the materials are extremely nice. But on top of that, on top of that, they don't pinch my toes. Most 
Jordan 4s are uncomfortable. Some of them are unwearable that I have, regardless if I size up, size down, whatever, they're uncomfortable. Not this shoe. And that's an absolute game changer for me. The olive green pairs well with earth tones, which are what I'm wearing a lot right now in the fall and the winter. Had to be here, had to be here. Okay, top three. We've got another pair of New Balance and it's a fact that when a pair of New Balance comes with a dust bag, that they are elevated. They're elegant and they're definitely a grown man sneaker. We've got the Ame Leondor and New Balance 860 V2. There's something about this shoe that just screams, wear me with anything. This to me felt like the most elegant retro runner that has materials like this on it that I saw this year. And I, for some reason, just want to wear this with a top coat and you know some off-white denim. Good shoe. Sorry about the lighting in here. The sun went down and I ended up talking about these a lot more than I thought I was gonna. Okay, at number two, some 990. Almost lost it, oh shit. We've got some New Balance 990 V4s, just got them. This is that shoe that I kept looking at. Like, I don't need them, I don't need them, I don't need them, forget about them, forget about them, forget about them. Ended up needing them. I wanted to get these before they went away because sometimes New Balance go away and you just can't find them. The colorway is among my favorite combos of the year, white, and forest green. Let me know if you guys grabbed any of the made in USA inline Teddy Santis New Balance that dropped this year. There were a lot. Okay, and at number one is a pair of Jordans that went on sale. I wanted these since back in the day when they originally first released. The colorway here just screams elegance. So we've got the burgundy fives and this is gonna be one of those shoes, I just know it, it's gonna creep up in resale value. Not next year, probably not the one after that, but eventually these are gonna become something that a lot of people wish they had. I really don't think we're gonna see an all suede burgundy Jordan Retro release again. This just feels special to me. And the Air Jordan 5 is so bulky, it's a hard Jordan Retro to dress up but you can do it with these. This was my go-to fall Jordan retro sneaker and I'm glad that I went ahead and grabbed a pair. Let me know down in the comment section what some of your favorite grown man sneakers were this year. I was gonna do five, ended up doing 10, then the sun went down, I yapped forever, my voice is gone. Wow. Before you get out of here, definitely hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. There's a lot more of my content down in the description. That's a wrap for me though. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.